ever seen. Wonder if you ever seen. Wonder if you ever did. Wonder if you ever did. Wonder if you ever looked. This is this. I wonder if you ever seen it. I wonder if you ever did it. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be discussing the first episode of the All That Reboot. Now, I do want to say right off the bat that the All That Reboot actually surprised me. Not only did it live up to the expectations, it did exceed the expectations just a bit for me. And that right there was all I needed. You know what I'm saying? Because I told you guys I needed proof enough to make it something considerably, you know, that I will watch. So they kept the original theme song by TLC and they didn't remix the theme song. So I like that. Once the intro came on, you know what I'm saying? It was like fresh out the box. Stop. Look and watch. Ready yet? Get set. It's all that. And I just was like, oh shit. They doing this right now. I'm like getting excited. I'm getting pumped. And then I hear the theme song and it literally brought like tears to my eyes because it was taking me back in time. And I said to myself, this show is going to be worthy of watching. The fact that they kept that the same and didn't change it, I was sold on it, you know? Because generally when you see all these rebooted shows and everything like that, they do these freaking shitty, horrible jobs and remixing the original theme songs. And they try to bring it into, you know, the relevant timing. And it just doesn't work out. But I'm like, this worked out for all that. Considering this was a reboot, but they kept the same theme song, I said that was great. You know what I'm saying? Like paying homage to the original 90s version of the show. Then they also opened up with the whole situation of five minutes. You guys have five minutes to get here, you know? And if you guys don't really understand that, the, the, the you know, the evidence behind that, basically, if you go back and look, you know, to the original show, that was always something that, like, uh, stage manager was telling the cast men, the cast members, basically, of the show that they have five minutes until the show starts. So they will have to get out and do everything that they needed to do. So they pretty much gave you, like, a whole behind-the-scenes kind of situation with this um, intro because of the fact that they had the OG cast members giving them pointers and, you know, tips on how to prepare themselves for their very first episode. And I think that was just a great idea. You know what I'm saying? It was good, good directing there by having the OG members there on as moral support. That way, you know, because of the fact that this is their first episode, they can get all those jitters out. You know what I'm saying? Instead of having them in the audience, they're right there on stage with them. So it just makes them feel more comfortable. So I thought that was a great idea. And this new cast, man, I'm going to be honest, they definitely have some potential in their futures. They definitely have a lot of growth. Some of them are funny and some of them, you know, they're just like halfway funny. Some of them is just like extremely funny. But at the end of the day, when it came down to the show airing, the intention was to basically get the audience of the new generation's attention, if that makes sense to you guys. So it wasn't really about trying to make me laugh, but to be honest, I did laugh at most of the stuff. Not every single thing was funny within that episode, but I did get a laugh out of most of the stuff. And I will tell you guys, what two segments I liked the most in a couple seconds. So as I said, you know, I wasn't the intended target, you know what I'm saying? This is for the new generation, but you also had some of the older generation watching this episode. And the viewers for this episode was actually, you know, up in ratings um, as far as, you know, a ratio of, you know, older to younger. So not going to give you the exact numbers, but just just by me telling you, it did very good for his first episode. Now, as I said, not every skit was extremely funny, but I did get a laugh out of most stuff. And as I said, once again, I wasn't the intended target. You know what I'm saying? This was for the new generation, but 
it was both viewed by new and old generations. And one of my favorite segments now that I'm going to tell you about is the um, first segment in which they did this like celebrity mass singer, but it was a dancer edition. And they did basically impressions of Beyonce, Ariana Grande, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Nick Cannon, Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, it was just a very funny way to open up the show. And it was a very funny way to pay homage to, you know, some of Hollywood's great actors and, you know, actresses and singers. Um, but now when you think about it, Nick Cannon, you know, with them actually doing an impression of him that might actually sell and trying to get Nick Cannon to feature in one of the episodes. And honestly, I think he's on board for it because he supports Nickelodeon still to this very day. He comes back and do awards every now and then. He does these uh, these uh, mini shows that appear sometimes on Nickelodeon alongside with JoJo CY. So you know that he still supports the system. So it won't be hard going out there getting him, you know, if that makes sense to you guys. So, um, and then when you think about other names that they mentioned, like Ariana Grande, yes, she was, you know, primarily on Disney Channel, but she still has a big effect on kids today. So that probably was the reason why they decided to do an impression of her. The Beyonce impression was, you know, a bit much. I don't think Beyonce kind of acts like that. And the whole Dwayne The Rock Johnson impression, I laughed at it in the beginning, but then afterwards it like super died down. And I hope he doesn't do that impression anymore. Um, Nick Cannon's impression was pretty solid. Um, the Billy Ray Cyrus scene was actually really funny because of the fact that, you know, naturally they're kids and, of course, they're not going to know who the hell Billy Ray Cyrus is. And then the canon just was like, oh, you're Miley Cyrus's dad. Because it's just like going off of his name. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, they're too young to know who you are. You know, and as I said, with her coming from Disney Channel, maybe these kids didn't watch Disney Channel, you know, because back in the day, there was a show called Hannah Montana and Billy Ray Cyrus was actually on that show. He wasn't featured. He was on the show in almost every single episode, you know? So that was the introduction into who Billy Ray Cyrus was in case you didn't know who he was back then, you know? Um, now my second favorite scene had to be the scene with Marie. Now, I don't remember exactly what the segment was called, but basically she was there to, you know, get rid of things that weren't needed anymore in the house. And she was kind of like a female version of Repairman because she honestly came there and destroyed everything. And I like how they brought that wrecking ball in. Now that could also be a meme as well as to the Mighty Cyrus situation with the father. You can also use that as well because they definitely came in like a wrecking ball and they took out that entire wall. I just love when kids are able to destroy things on set because it just naturally relieves stress and it helps them get through the scene. So I do know that, you know, with her destroying that stuff, she probably felt more relieved doing that scene. And it just looked fun as hell to destroy, a you know, a China cabinet set you know, destroying a couch, destroying the entire wall, just everything went down, crumbled. It was a good, fun show. Um, and as I said, not every single scene and segment was extremely funny, but I did get a laugh out of most parts. And then they give you that, um, that close out with the Jonas Brothers. And they also did the freaking um, Good Burger scene. And that gave me the feels. Oh, man, that gave me the feels. Just seeing Kel portraying Ed once again, he still has it, you know? With him being older, he still got it. But it did look different because you can tell that he is a lot older. He put on a lot more muscle and weight. So it looked kind of weird. He was behind the counter. He's all buff. But it was still pretty funny, pretty solid. And as I said, they closed out the show with their musical guests, so they definitely paid homage to the original 90s version of the show. 
and it was just a great show. What a way to bring back the original elements of the 90s classic show. My final score of the show is an 8 out of 10, ladies and gentlemen. That was my review. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. Peace.